It took me three years to take this picture. I can show you why it took so long and how I took it. Stick around. Hey, I'm Barry, and I'm a Canadian living in Mexico, and I've been here for 11 years. And I've been documenting the, the differences between living in Mexico and living in Canada, and it would be similar to the United States. So a few weeks ago, I posted a video of a, uh, of a butterfly on my Facebook, and I got a lot of comments. I was pretty proud of that picture, but it took me three years to get that picture. Why did it take me so long to get that picture? Well, let me start from the beginning. About three years ago, in end of September, probably early October, I noticed a lot of monarch butterflies, and I was wondering, why are there so many monarch butterflies here in Mexico? I'm used to seeing them in southern Ontario, so I did a little research that the monarch butterflies migrate and they start in southern Ontario and they end up in the southern part of Mexico. So it's quite a journey. So the monarch butterflies in, in Ontario, they eat, the larvae eat milkweed. So if you have milkweed in your garden in Ontario, leave it, don't kill it because that's what the monarch larvae eat. Now the, the mature butterflies, they eat pollen. In the article, the author was stating that the butterflies are starting to die off in the Sierra Madres in Mexico because of lack of food. So I said, well, that's interesting. I wonder where that is. So I looked up on a map and guess what? Sierra Madres, that's where I live. I'm in a plateau in the Sierra Madre. So I did some more research to see what I could do to help. And what the article says is to plant flowers with really nice red and orange flowers and have some stones out in, the, uh, in your garden in order to uh, have minerals for the, uh, for the butterflies. So I did a little more research and they say a good flower is lantana. I never heard of that before. Went to my local vivero, which is a, a nursery here in Mexico. And I showed them a picture of the lantana. Said, oh yeah, the lantana grows very well here. So I bought some lantana and I converted my backyard into a butterfly garden. So let me show you the, the, the steps that I did to convert my, uh, my garden, my, my yard into a garden. My yard went from this to this. There was no soil in my backyard. Digging a hole is complicated. You need picks and shovels. First step, transplant four palm trees and one oak tree. Step two, cover the rock hard earth with 10 millimeters of black soil and cover with St. Augustine sod. Prepare the area for a poured concrete patio. A contractor poured the patio and topped it off with ceramic tile. I added lights to the garden to accent the palm trees. Built a pergola to keep the sun off. The oak tree was struggling, so I replaced it with a native palm. I removed the grass and topsoil underneath the three palm trees, replaced it with some sand, and I made a little area that looks like a beach, similar to Cancun. Okay, this is garden number one. This garden here is a tribute to the beaches in Mexico. So this sand is similar to the, to the sand you'll see in the Cozumel. These are palms are, are typical of, of Mexico. This is a plant that you will see when you're in the Cancun area, just off the, uh, off the beach. And you see Los Lirios, these are lilies. You see them here. And this is just some covering to cover up the wall. But this is garden number one. Being a Canadian, I've always wanted to have a, a, a garden with palms. And this is my palm garden. This is garden number two. This is some of the plants that you'll see in the desert. So you see some uh, yucca, some uh, uh, agave. This is the agave right here. And you see some other plants. This is to represent uh, not necessarily the desert, but the semi-desert area that we have in, uh, in Mexico. This is also a palm that's typical of, of Mexico. So 
this palm flourishes in this area. We do get cold weather in winter time and this palm uh, has no issues. This is the garden here that I put in to attract butterflies. And the plants you see that are orange and yellow, those are lantana. Lantana attracts butterflies. And you can see I have a lot of there too. So you also see some plants along the back. They have white flowers in the springtime. They do also attract uh, the butterflies. Now, one of the things that I also read about butterflies is that they don't get enough minerals in the, um, just from the pollen. So what they suggest is you have rocks, you wet the rocks, the butterflies stand on top of the rocks and the minerals leach out of the rock into the water and through their feet into their body. So there's rocks throughout my garden. Uh, these were actually buried in the garden. So when you're digging up the garden, these, this rock and about three others, I'll show you later, were, uh, were part of the garden. We dug them out and now I'm using this as the landscape. You could see some butterflies flying around right now. This is typical that I see here. In the morning when I water, you'll see a probably there's about a hundred or so that are other hiding in the garden. So you could see this right there. You could see them flying around really quick. This is a lime tree. So this is just outside my patio and you could see small limes on it. Another couple of weeks, actually another week or so, I'll start harvesting these and I'll make uh, limonada off of this. So this is my lime tree. The yard conversion to a butterfly garden is complete. Let's call this one a success. Let's go fix something else.